Now, if we look at some of the research studies where, in these, and then what I'm going to talk about today are human research studies. There's a lot of animal studies. There's also a lot of in vitro or petri dish studies on the benefits or the potential benefits of lipoic acid. But I'm really going to focus today on some of the human research studies that we know show benefit in humans. And so, in summary, these are some of the categories here we'll go over. Uh, we know that alpha lipoic acid. Uh, in diabetics reduces hemoglobin A1C, which is this average of blood sugar over time. We know that it improves insulin sensitivity. So it helps your insulin work better and, and helps you require less insulin. We know that it can also reduce fasting blood glucose. Now, what, what is, on this note, so these are all related to, to uh, the impact of blood sugar, obviously. One of the things you, you want to know, if you're going to consider using lipoic acid as a supplement and you start taking high doses, and you know, for diabetics, there are research studies that show anywhere from 100 milligrams a day up to 1,200 milligrams a day of, of lipoic acid. You want to monitor your blood sugar, because one of the side effects when you lower and improve these things is your medicine, if you're on metformin or if you're on Ozempic or any of these other diabetic medications, your blood sugar might drop too low. And so if you're getting dizzy, if you're getting what we call hangry, hungry, angry, headaches, fatigue, these are all potential signs that your blood sugar is dropping too low. Now, if you're, if you're diabetic and you're going to do this, you should be monitoring that blood sugar because if it starts to drop and it goes too low, obviously you want to have a conversation with your doctor about adjusting um, your medication accordingly. Now, we also know there are a number of research studies that show that, that lipoic acid improves diabetic neuropathy. And we'll talk more about that as well. There's a condition in diabetes, a lot of this is linked to diabetes because most of the research on this nutrient is around uh, blood sugar, but there's a condition of diabetics called retinopathy. This is when blood sugar starts to damage the eyes. And so in some studies, what, what they've shown is that visual contrast sensitivity in diabetics is typically pretty poor, but those that take alpha lipoic acid, not only do we see enhanced improvements here, but we see preservation of eye function in diabetics who take alpha lipoic acid. We also know Alzheimer's. There's improved cognitive parameters and there's also reduction in inflammatory markers of the blood linked to Alzheimer's. So um, human studies have shown both. We know that it improves weight loss, and this is even in people. You know, what's interesting about the weight loss studies is, is you know, they, they compare people taking it, not taking it, and being on the same types of diets, and the people in the lipoic acid group have better weight loss, have low, have better improvements in their BMI. So we know it definitely can impact weight loss, heart rate variability, which which is very interesting because the, the worse your heart rate variability, the greater risk for things like heart attack, stroke, and metabolic syndrome. So we want to see excellence in your heart rate variability. We also know, as I mentioned earlier, it enhances blood flow or improves blood flow. And this has been measured in a number of, of human studies um, where they measure dilation of blood vessels. So all that to be said, let's dive into some of these research studies and talk about them and um, show you some of these results. Okay, this first one here, the effects of lipoic acid supplementation on blood pressure. And so you can see this is a review study or an analysis of multiple studies. In this case, it was a total of 11 randomized controlled trials with 674 patients. And you can see here ALA, alpha lipoic acid, supplementation significantly reduced SBP. That's systolic blood pressure. That's the top number. And you can see 5.46 was the average reduction in these patients. So it reduced the top number, the systolic. So remember, systolic over diastolic is generally the way doctors give your blood pressure. 
and you can see it, it reduced systolic on average 5.46. And this was, um, this was again, an 11, 11 randomized control trials with 674 patients. You can see it reduced diastolic blood pressure here an average of 3.36. So we got 3.36 point reduction on the diastolic side. And this is just supplementation. This is not diet. This is not exercise. This isn't other things that people typically can do to lower blood pressure. So that's a pretty substantial reduction um, just from taking supplementation. And you can see here dosages uh, in, in terms of how much alpha lipoic acid was used, 800 milli the average was 800 milligrams a day in these trials, and study times were about 12 weeks. So 800 milligrams a day, 12-week time frame, 5.5 point reduction on the top, 3.3 um, reduction on the bottom for blood pressure. Not bad for a simple nutrient. Okay, let's look next at, we've talked about the blood flow component of improving blood flow for alpha lipoic acid. And so this study, this is a, a study done where you see five studies, including six effect sizes and 300 participants were included. So this is a review meta-analysis of multiple tr studies as well. Their results showed that alpha lipoic acid supplementation appears to improve the EF. The EF is endothelial function. Well, let's talk a little bit more about what that is. So your blood vessels, you know, the tubes that run through your body that deliver the vital oxygen and nutrients if blood flow's going this way, well, the blood vessels, the layer of blood vessels, the outer layer is, there's a muscle, it's a smooth muscle. And so blood vessels, just like any other muscle, can contract and relax. If you get uh, a, a, a relaxation of smooth muscle, you actually, in, in a sense, you get dilation out. So you get the, the vessel actually dilates out, opens up more. And this is, when you open, open up that circo, circumference, you get better blood flow, you get better oxygen and nutrient delivery. And when, when you have the opposite of that, which is contraction, then the blood vessel closes in and it narrows. So the hole narrows, the, the, the pressure goes up and that hole narrows. And so now you get less flow of oxygen, less flow of nutrients. So obviously if we can take something that can improve the dilation, right, that, that can function here by helping that blood vessel expand, then ideally that's gonna have impacts on blood pressure and nutrient delivery. So that's, that's a good thing, especially those of you with pre-diagnosed hypertension or high blood pressure, and you're trying to figure out ways to kind of support your body through this. So, you know, most doctors won't prescribe lipoic acid to get blood pressure reduction. What they'll prescribe are medications, right? Many of these medications like diuretics um, and, and ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers, what do these medicines do? These medicines, many of the blood pressure meds will reduce B vitamins, which are important for energy and, re and important for control of heart disease risk. But one nutrient in particular they'll really affect is CoQ10. Now, how does that relate to lipoic acid? What did we say earlier that lipoic acid helps to regenerate CoQ10 and preserve CoQ10? Blood pressure medicines reduce it. It's very, one of lipoic acid's functions is preservation of CoQ10. That's why it's so important for heart disease and blood flow and everything else. So if you're taking medicine that blocks this nutrient, you're going to um, put more demand on lipoic acid potentially. And so we, we really want to look at lipoic acid, you know, as a potential here. Now, one, it's, it's virtually it's side effect free, um, especially at reasonable doses. Uh, but two, there's no downside. When you take lipoic acid, there's not really a downside for side effects or potential issues. And we'll talk more about the safety and the dosing um, here in a little bit. But bottom line, it improves smooth muscle dilation of blood vessels. This is actually done uh, through 
nitric oxide production. And many of you have heard of this, this nutrient, nitric oxide, is, is very critical for dilation of blood vessels. It won a Nobel Prize a number of years ago for this discovery. Um, one of the things that's responsible for nitric oxide is vitamin C. Remember what we said earlier about lipoic acid's role in regenerating vitamin C. So there's a lot of overlap between a lot of these antioxidant nutrients and their role on vascular function, on, on free radical protection, etc. But the endothelial function of blood vessels improves. Again, these are human trials. You can see coming back to it, the results show that ALA supplementation appears to improve endothelial function, thus enhancing blood flow and oxygen deliverability. Now, one other thing to consider as, we, if we, as we've talked about, um, let's redraw this for you, as we've talked about um, the function of lipoic acid, and we're, we're going to talk more about the blood sugar regulatory effects but remember, same blood vessel here, blood flowing this way. The higher the glucose, so the higher your blood glucose, the thicker your blood viscosity. Blood viscosity is the thickness of your blood. And if it's too thick, it's going to create an increase in blood pressure. So remember, alpha lipoic acid, not only can it enhance the blood flow, but it actually has an impact on blood glucose. So there's multiple effects going on here with lipoic acid. It's not just a, a singular effect. It's a multitude uh, of different effects that are at play here.